right, guys. What's good? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh my god. Okay. Um, let's get into it. We're gonna make a lobby system. I'm kind of just throwing this together because I've seen like all all like dude, so many games, front page games, tycoons, tower defense, horror lobby matches, round based systems, they all use like a lobby system and so lobby systems are one of the most common things I see in uh, uh, Roblox games, um, popular Roblox games, that is. And so I'm going to I'm going to go over um, those for you real quick, and we're just gonna get started. Okay, so uh, what was I even listening to? I'm really kind of warped right now. Um, Okay, let's get started. All right, what are we going to do here? I mean, I'm just kind of making this uh, out of nowhere. Like I was watching Cat Williams, then I started listening to Lofi Hip Hop Vibes, um, and now we're just making a tutorial. So let's go ahead and get into it, all right? Now, I'm going to use a script for this. So we're just going to use just regular like code, Roblox code. That's what we're going to be doing for this video. We're not going to be doing like, you know, making modules or classes or whatever. Um, I might make it a class video on this, actually the same concept, because if it's interesting enough. Um, but let's go ahead and just kind of, you know, get get going on this because it's really simple so the first thing we're going to have here is a table um so we're going to have uh we can have we can have a few tables here we can have um local lobbies equals table and then we however many game or however many lobbies we have so let's say like our lobbies are these parts let's set up some parts real quick and use these as our, as our lobbies um let's do that yeah that'll be cool all right so that's lobby that's like one lobby right there and we'll just use this as our lobby color two lobby um three lobby all right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a folder and um we're gonna name it lobbies and then we're gonna say for every uh lobby in workspace get children uh lobbies do um lobbies lobby equals table sure yeah let's do that so that's what we're gonna do for that and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say um lobby dot touched connect function uh other part and we're gonna say uh lobby well we're gonna say local character equals other part dot parent if not character then return i don't do one-liners because um, after a while, if you're, especially when you're working it with a large code base, um, it's actually this doing it this way makes it more readable. The one liner is kind of confusing after a bit and it's, it makes it just a little bit harder to read through, especially if you're trying to read through code quickly. Um, so yeah, that's why I don't do the one liners ever. That's why you don't, you'll never see me do those. Um, but let's go ahead and continue. So then let's say, uh, what are we going to do here? Um, we'll say lobby or we'll say, uh, lobbies 
lobby. Actually, yeah, we'll do ta uh, if table dot find um, lobbies lobby player then return we'll have a warn here player is already in lobby and we don't have the player yet so we're going to get the player local player equals um players get player from character um, and for those of you who don't know, don't worry about the fact that I just remembered this function out of nowhere. I've written it so many times and for the longest time I had to look it up and that's normal. You know, if you don't remember, a fun don't think as a programmer that you have to remember, um, a specific function name. That's not like, just because you remember a specific name of a function doesn't mean that or method or whatever it is right it doesn't mean that it that makes you a better programmer um i think that's a common misconception one of the most common mis or one of the biggest common misconceptions for beginner and even intermediate programmers i've seen like intermediate programmers get that idea that if they remember so much stuff that they're better and it's just like that's not that's not always the case that's almost never the case i think but yeah, let's get this service. Game get players. Game get service. Well, uh, players. All right, and then we'll say if not player, then return. I'm not gonna put a warn here. It's like, frick it. Um, and then we'll have table dot insert lobbies, 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 lobby. Uh. And then insert player, and then let's just have a, so we don't have to create UI in this video. Um, we'll just have um, a print statement in a while loop. Print lobbies. Uh, so we can see that. Um, but, you know, if you want to have your UI, you should be using a remote event and firing your, um, you know, information down to the client and, and setting all that up properly. Uh, let's see. Um, so we have this right here. Okay, so cool. And then we'll have, um, let's say like, we could have something to where in, in probably this, since we're managing, um, since this is how we're managing, uh, our, our lobby tables, we could have something in here. Like if, um, if lobbies lobby, what lobby. So if hashtag, um, lobbies lobby is greater or equal to players to start then so then we'll have a a constant up here players to start equals let's say one uh and then we'll have you know print um starting lobby in countdown sure we'll use that starting lobby in countdown or starting lobby countdown because you know usually games have like you know if you enter if enough players enter that can play then they'll have that like countdown to for the leaving and, and all that all that sort of thing so yeah we'll say that um and then for the countdown i guess we could do uh task dot spawn function um, we'll have countdown equals zero, and then we'll have wild test dot wait one view 
countdown minus equals one. We'll actually have a countdown of 20. Then we'll print countdown. Countdown. All right, cool. Um, and then you know, I'll I'll show you in a second. But yeah, let's let's just go ahead and play it. Touch is not a valid member of camera. Okay. Um, that is because I am a bot and I got children lobbies. What am I doing? Lobbies get children. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyways, all right, cool. So now we're getting this stuff and uh, you can see these instances are blank tables and you might not, you might want to change how you manage your, your lobbies. You may not want to use the part instances or a touched event. Even there's so many different things that you can use. Um, I'm just getting the idea across. Uh, but yeah, boom player is already in lobby. So I am currently in lobby. We can check our new one of our new things. I am currently in this lobby right here and it uh, counted as this. And now you may be wondering like, well, this is like the first part that you laid down. Well, when we use um, this right here, uh, it's, it doesn't, I'm fairly certain. I'm pretty sure this is how this works. It doesn't, it doesn't go in like, it doesn't just go one, two, three, you know, it gets it at random. So uh, yeah. Anyways, um, so this is, uh, all right. So yeah, I'm in this lobby right now. Right. And so now I'm in this lobby and, and that's pretty much it. I mean, that's really, really it. Like that's pretty much like, this is how you would do a lobby. Now, obviously there's so many different things you can do. Let's say, um, let's say, uh, uh, if I wanted to, um, We'll just have a task dot spawn, like because you know they have like usually they have a leave UI, so which is a button, um, and I don't really feel like doing that right now, so we're just gonna simulate a button, um, so Prince player has pressed leave lobby, and then we're gonna actually do task dot delay, do like five seconds here. And then what we'll do is table dot remove lobbies lobby table dot find um, lobbies lobby player and that will simulate us leaving the uh, lobby. So I'm gonna go up and this time I'm gonna to go to this lobby right here. So I've now entered this lobby and I'm gonna act like I'm leaving and I'm gonna oop press a button. All right, and then we'll say this right here. So I haven't left yet. Let's see. So then I, I've I've left. Where did I leave at? I left right here. Prayer has plus leave lobby button. Now you see our countdown is still going. So what we can do here in the code is we can say like while um if players to start we can say while um what is it uh while we can say actually we can actually do this while and task dot wait and so this should cut out let's go ahead and play again this should this should break our loop our countdown loop as soon as i press uh the um you know leave lobby button so let's go ahead and check that out okay so now i'm leaving the lobby okay i'm pressing the lobby button i've pressed the lobby button as, as you can see it canceled our countdown um so yeah, our, our countdown has been canceled. And so this is this is a way we can manage um, lobbies. And, and then what we can do is let's say when the countdown hits a certain, you know, whatever, 
um, like if countdown is less than or equal to zero, then um, teleport players, you know, and I'll just do a print so you can read it better. We'll do prints um, teleporting players in lobby table. And so that is, it really is that simple. And it's just however you want to manage it. Like, let's say you have, you don't want to do a touched event and you want to use the zone plus module, which I made a video on. And you want to use that. You can use the zone plus module to then connect, you know, on player entered zone. I'm going to do all this stuff here. And then, or you can do like, let's say a, you want only UI. I want to be able to click, you know, like there's so many different ways you can do it. And, um, let's say you want it to, uh, they, they, you want them to run into a wall, not the floor. Okay. Well that's simple. Or you can make an invisible floor and you can just bring it out past the wall, you know, and turn can collide to false. Um, so there's so many different ways you can do it. This is just getting across the idea of just, here's my lobby system. Here's like, I'm using tables to manage the players in the lobby. Um, I'm, you know, and that's pretty much, it's really, it really is that simple. And as far as like using while loops, is it bad practice? Use while loops. Do you want to use heartbeat? Whatever. Um, I really genuinely don't think it matters as long as you make sure that you're cleaning things up and you know that uh, you're using good practice um, and you know so you don't have any memory leaks um, it's really not going to make a difference uh, yeah so that's pretty much it for this video that's really all I wanted to cover just like the basics of a lobby system because I thought it'd be be a cool topic to go over I thought it'd be very useful as well um, and yeah, I might actually like make a whole situation. This was just kind of like a random, uh, video I wanted to make, um, fairly quickly just to touch on, but I might make like, you know, a class for this. Maybe I might go more in detail. I might set it up a different way, how I would want to do it. I'll add, you know, teleporting from, uh, one place to the next, which is very simple. Um, it's just changing the player's C frame, or you can use, I think it's either, it's either move to or pivot to, um, methods, which are, is literally doing the same thing as just changing the C frames. Um, so yeah. And then side note, if you're wanting to do that, change the C frames, always like make it higher than the floor or else the player will get stuck to the floor or go through the floor there is a chance of that happening so you always want to make it like higher than, than the floor but all right um that is pretty much it for this video i'm just gonna wrap her up right here um and i'll see you guys on the next one peace <laughs>